The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. I like to get you warmed up. <laughs> a woman alone, grief stricken. She can't see. Her eyes are filled with tears. The man who had rescued her, whom she gave her life to serve, whom she anointed with oil and lavished love on, was dead. Stone cold dead in the tomb, as they used to say. She couldn't understand it. She put all of her hope in him. Her whole life was concentrated in his life. She'd left no life to herself. She had given herself to his service. And now her heart is broken. They have taken away my Lord, she says twice in the Gospel today. And I know not where they have laid him. One of the extraordinary things about our Easter service is that it brings into conjunction two things. And they're not eggs and rabbits. <laughs> Death and life. Oh, you say Easter's all about life. Read the colic for today. Hear the lessons. Death and life. To most of us, death is the defining moment. It's the end of it all. Our lives are done. Whether we're ready or not, that's it. And so what do we make of this Easter message that says, no, death is not the defining moment. Life is the defining moment. Life which goes on. Life which is changed and yet vital. More vital than anything we've experienced on earth. After all, we don't get cancer and broken legs after, after this. But Mary can't grasp that. As many of us on Easter Sunday cannot grasp this. They have taken away my Lord. They've taken away my solace. They've taken away that which I relied on. And I'm feeling alone and I'm feeling... Uh, I'm crying. And the angels in the tomb. For the word angel in Greek. Angelos means messenger. The messengers say, what are you crying for? They've taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. It's not just that he's not there, but where is he? I can't find him. And once again, tries to peer through her tears. She hears a voice behind her. For the scripture says eventually that she turns. <coughs> Mary. Now our names are precious to us. And there's nothing more precious than to hear somebody we love Say our name. 
Well, I mean, when they, when, when, when they're not mad at us. <laughs> when I was a boy, I was Tony when I was good, and I was Anthony when I was bad. But there's nothing more thrilling than when the person we love dearly says to us, our name. <coughs> Mary, the voice. She's puzzled. A gardener with a voice like Jesus, but it can't be Jesus. And so she says again, They've taken away my Lord. It's become almost a broken record with her. That's all she can say. And then, as he pronounces her name, she knows. She knows. <coughs> she doesn't call Jesus Jesus. She says, Rabunai, Rabbi, teacher, my teacher. Maybe that was the relationship, the depth of the relationship between Mary Magdalene and Jesus. He taught her everything that made life worthwhile. But it wasn't just a lesson. It was a lesson embodied in a person. And now he's there. He's risen. And then he says something rather strange to her. He says, don't, don't hang on to me. Don't hang on to me. Go and tell the rest of them. Now, Peter and John have already been to the tomb and they've seen the empty tomb and they realize something's happening and Jesus had told them what was going to happen but it didn't sink in. I'm not going to say that a priest knows that about preaching sermons. <laughs> it didn't sink in. It was lost somewhere. And she bursts in on them. I've seen the law. That sounds a bit too personal for Episcopalians, doesn't it? I've seen the law. And on this Easter Sunday, where are you? Have they taken away your Lord and you know not where he is? Or have you forgotten who he is? Or has he ceased to be important in your life? A center in your life? The center of your life? Have the things of this world obscured him? busy as we are about getting up in the morning and doing the things we're supposed to be doing and dealing with bills and, 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 and the telephone won't work and the freezer's gone on the blink and, 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 and uh, our husband needs feeding, why the devil can't he feed himself? What happened to women's liberation? Um, <laughs> somehow the Lord has been taken away from us and we no longer know where he is. And yet he calls us. He calls us by the name that we were given at the font. Maybe not at that font, but at a font somewhere. 
where the priest gave us our name, our Christian name. It's a pity they've abolished that term. Our grandparents used it all the time, Christian name. But we've become so politically correct nowadays that we call it our first name. But it's our Christian name. It was suggested by our parents that it was given by the church in baptism. <clears throat> it's the name that Jesus knows you by. And this morning, he speaks to us. He calls us by our name. And then he says, don't cling to me. I'm not your personal possession. Go and tell. Go and tell. That is always Christ's call to us. Share. Share the love I put in your heart. It's not your love, you know. You don't manufacture it. No, I looked in her eyes and I fell in love. Where did that love come from? Well, our loves would be more hearable if we remembered from whence they came. All love comes from God because God is love. Go share. Go tell. Don't cling to me. Tell others. Tell others. Tell others that Jesus is the center of your life. That he holds you together. <clears throat> that you can't live without him. Those endearments that we mutter to another human being, have you ever uttered them to Jesus who calls you? I can't live without you, Lord. You make my life worth living. You are the center of my being. And he says to us, don't cling to me. Go and tell. Go and tell. Who told you that religion was a personal and private thing? Jesus didn't tell you that. That's a marvelous excuse not to do anything about your faith. Not to share it. Uh, it's embarrassing to share it. Somebody might think you're a Baptist. <laughs> or a television evangelist. Now I'm not asking you all to go up to your colleagues at work and say, are you saved? Because nowadays, they won't even think of that in a religious connotation. They'll think that <coughs> you think they've been in an accident or something. Sharing Christianity is not a faith, it's a life. And the genuineness of our Christianity is demonstrated by the way we treat each other and the way we show Christ to each other. As Jesus said elsewhere, it's no good saying, Lord, Lord, do my will. So with Mary, be glad that he is risen. And hear him speak your name this morning in faith. Come receive him in the sacrament.
and be possessed in your body and your soul by the living Lord, the risen Lord. And then go tell, go show. Christ is risen. The Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed.